Hey, I'm Matt Poirwall, a documentary cinematographer, and today we're at Brooklyn Phono, where we're setting up for our first shoot. So I wanted to talk about the C300 Mark II and some of the options that we have with resolution, with color space, log gamma, things like that. So let's just jump right into it. So for the majority of the projects that I'm shooting now, I really have two different options. I'm either going to finish the project in full HD or I'm going to finish the project in UHD. And the reason for choosing UHD is because most of my projects are going to be in 16 by 9. You know, I've got 4K and 2K if I wanted to play with different aspect ratios. But for the majority across the board, you know, I'm really looking at a 16 by 9 UHD or full HD image. So if I'm choosing to finish in full HD, I've got a couple different options that I might choose. If I go into my resolution, the first is I might choose this UHD 422 10-bit. And what this does is this gives me the ability to crop or reframe some of my images, whether it's an interview or things like that, or I can go in and do some post-production stabilization as well. So shooting in UHD just gives me a little bit of flexibility in some options that I have in post-production while still finishing in full HD. So the other option that I have is if I'm finishing in full HD, is I can choose a variety of different options for my 1920 by 1080. So here, of course, if I'm doing you know, a high-end project, I could choose 444 12-bit, which will give me a lot of color information. Now, keep in mind, this does give you a lot more information that's being recorded to your card, but it gives you a lot of room to play with in post-production. For me personally, on documentaries, I like to have as much space as I can on the card. So I would probably default to using one of the 422 10-bit options, either in Full HD or in UHD, because it's still a high data rate, low compression footage that's recording internally to the CFast cards. So I really have still a lot of flexibility that I can play with in post. So more and more I'm being asked to shoot and finish my projects in UHD. You know, there's a lot more distribution options out there available for UHD. So this is becoming something to consider. Now, one thing when making that decision though, when shooting in UHD is you've got less record time on your cards and you've got a much higher data rate compared to full HD files. So it can be difficult editing 4K native files in your editing software. So one thing that I really like to do on projects in UHD is to actually record internally full HD proxy files. And let me show you how I get that set up. So if I go into the menu, in my recording setup options, I have the XAVC proxy recording option. I can activate this and turn it on. And what this does is to the SD card inside the camera is it will record proxy full HD files. So utilizing the proxy record option is not only nice for being able to pass files around to the director, to producers, but it also helps simplify your media management workflow through the entire course of the project. So that's what we're doing with this project here at Brooklyn Phono, is we're shooting and finishing the project in UHD, and we're utilizing the proxy record option so that our editor can work off of those files, and then in the end, relink the UHD files, and we'll send that information to Technicolor for the color correct. So let me take you into the custom picture menu and talk about two options here. Under the presets, there's really two different options that I use um, quite regularly. And one is Canon Log 2 with the Cinema Gamut. This is a really great preset option if you're shooting in high contrast situations. It gives you up to 15 stops of dynamic range, so you've got a lot of information that you can work with there. Now, the other option is shooting with Canon Log. Now, with Canon Log, I'm able to, again, retain a lot of information, but at higher ISOs with less noise. So this is a really great option to use in low light situations. Now with the presets, there are three main things that the presets are built off of. They're built off of a gamma, they're built off of a color space, and they're built off of a matrix. With the Canon Log 2 with the Cinema Gamut, it's working off of the Canon Log 2 gamma and the Cinema Gamut color space with a neutral profile for the matrix. Now with the Canon Log preset, this is working off of the Canon Log gamma curve with a Rec. 709 color space. This is a really great option if you're trying to match to other Cinema EOS cameras. Now I had a conversation with Technicolor who's gonna be doing the color grade on this project and you can see that conversation in another video. And when I was speaking with them, they really wanted me to record all of my information with the widest color space available. Because Technicolor is handling this color grade, they want all of that information and they're able to rein it in for our final image. So to be able to have the option of recording in both log two and in log gammas with this project while still having the cinema gamut color space as my base, let me show you how I can do that in Canon Log. If I go to my preset and I turn this off, I now have the option of going into the main settings and adjusting all three of these baseline options. For the gamma, I'm gonna choose Canon Log, but for the color space, instead of having the Rec. 709 that I would have in the preset, 
I'm now gonna choose cinema gamut. And for the color matrix, I'm gonna choose neutral because this is what the log two cinema gamut preset is built off of. So now I'm working on the same baseline of the color space and color matrix as I am with the preset of log two, but now I'm able to work with the log gamma in low light situations at a higher ISO. So one thing to consider is if you're in your custom picture and you turn the preset off and you create your own look, you might not be able to push a LUT out of the camera to external devices, but of course you do still have the option on certain devices to load a LUT into that monitor. Now, because on this project, I'm primarily shooting with the Canon Log2 preset, I'm gonna go ahead and go back and select that. And while I'm recording my proxy files, I do have the option of putting a LUT onto my proxy. So if I come down to the recording and media setup menu and I go into my XAVC proxy recording, here I can apply a LUT to the proxy. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the BT709 LUT onto my proxy. Now this is really nice when the editor brings in the, the proxy files to do the edit, they're not looking at a flat image because a lot of directors really don't like looking at a flat image when they're editing their project. So here, the editor is not only to see a nice image, but they're also able to see the same image that I'm viewing when I'm shooting my project. And then when we take this and relink with the UHD native files that are shot in log two cinema gamut, we're able to send that to Technicolor and they're gonna do the color correct based off of those files. So I hope that's given you some nice insight into how I set up my camera for resolution and custom picture settings. Uh, please check out our other videos for the C300 Mark II.